For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Omnipotent God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We need him. My people have committed two evils. Last week, a dear sister came to meet me. She's not in this church. She's visiting. She's visited once. And she was in a very challenging situation. She's been there for years and so many things. Gotten to the point where she's almost become cold. I told her, for the next couple of weeks and months, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 minutes at least every day. She came back to me last week. And she said, some things have begun to happen. Strange things. I don't have the time to begin to share some mind-blowing things. One or two things she shared with me. I want to challenge you. The highest thing you can do in your life is to court intimacy with the Holy Ghost. We are not foolish crying for the outpouring of His Spirit. We know. You see, God the Father knows. That's why God the Father says, because they grieved my spirit, I will forsake them. God the Son knows. He said, if you blaspheme against my spirit, I will not forgive you. If spirit comes upon us, they will hear in Tallahassee. They will hear. Spirit has not really, what we have is a trickle. You know, when it's raining and then it's not really raining, just you are feeling a breeze, small water. This is what we are seeing in the best of our places. No, let's press into God. That's why many lives are so barren. There's no life, Holy Ghost water. We have ignored him. Don't ignore him. When you go home, give him a special place and a special time. And just caught him. Forget about your needs and worries. Look for him, Lord. When he finds somebody who's out for him, he's found a wise man. That's the prayer this morning. That will the Son of God find faith? Will he find the persistent people? When I think of that admonition, I'm not thinking of how to persistently ask him for cars and houses. I'm thinking of how to cry to him for his glory to come. I want to see more than what I am seeing. And I know God is. Scientists have seen greater things. Do you know what science is doing? Amazing things. That if you told people who lived a thousand years ago that this is what science... I'm going to talk about Daniel very soon. And, And let me tell you, people do not know that one of the reasons that... Let me just go straight. One of the reasons... Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach was selected to be in the king's Nebuchadnezzar because they, they had destroyed Jerusalem, Israel, and then taken all of them captive. Do you know the king's instruction? Just like with Esther, who was a beauty queen. Actually, Daniel was, and his guys, they were the Einsteins of their time. Hmm. Open the Bible to Daniel chapter 1. Daniel and his, what the king did is somewhat like what Donald Trump trying to do in the U.S. now with what he calls the merit-based. 
whatever immigration, whatever. So you, you go to other countries and you take the best that they have in everything. There's no how your country will not develop. And this is the wisdom that Nebuchadnezzar dis- displayed. In that when he captured, when he captured um, Israel, the Jews, he, he, did not, he did not throw everybody away. He found standing people. The children, verse 4 says, in whom was no blemish, well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, <laughs> and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So these are the, we are going to convert these ones. Hallelujah. So understand this. When Israel was captured, one of the major things Nebuchadnezzar did was that selection, purging. And so he selected this group of people who were cunning in knowledge. That means <laughs> they had strange understanding of things. Some of them were understood finances, business. Beyond what you could understand. Nebuchadnezzar said, I can't throw these people away. Some of them, they had such great wisdom, skillful in wisdom. They, some were generals in the army. I was watching the other day, the immigration. And I saw how carefully they were looking out for people who were coming in from Syria. Who were expert musicians who were expert, they had known them from Syria, and they will find out if they are migrating. The Americans want to integrate them. The bombs that they blew, atomic bombs, some of them were Germans that they seized. They were not Americans. It's happening all over the world. It has been happening from time immemorial. So, understand, these men were special men. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But something very interesting I want you to note today as we go forward. I will still touch on Job, which we have been talking about, but it, I will begin to talk about Daniel today. Because we are still on the series, Mark This Man. And this study will take us into really what marked out all these men. Uh, we will continue to bring unique aspects of these men. But we will understand what in them, what made, I mean, Job. I will soon start talking about Noah. And you say, what? Let me show you a mystery. Some of you may have never have read this. And this will be in, um, let, let's look at 13, 14, 12, 13, 14. I think it's 14, but let me see. Yeah. Listen to the word from Ezekiel, from God, that God was speaking. Listen carefully. Son of man, when the land sins against me by trespassing grievously, then I will stretch out my hand upon it and I will break the staff of the bread thereof. Hey, prayer community. That's a prayer point. When I was researching these things, eh, my spirit, I, I felt in my spirit that I must awaken our prayer community that the staff of bread over us must stay. It will not be broken. Any power trying to break it, you know, the devil tries to do all these wicked things. These are mysteries in the spirit. And you must fight with precision. So this is a by the way for prayer community. And some of you who may be listening, and you don't know how to pray. There is something in the realm of the spirit called the staff of bread. The staff of the bread. And for some people, it's already broken. It must be restored. Therefore, I declare over your lives. The staff of the bread upon your life is restored. In the name of Jesus. It's a cause of disobedience. It's not a blessing of righteousness. But Satan will inflict those who are ignorant with this. I say the staff of the bread. God's staff of bread over your life will never break. Be restored in Jesus' name. 
be fixed in Jesus' name. Repair the broken staffs of our destinies in Jesus' name. And I will send famine upon it and I will cut off man and beast from it. Listen. Though these three men, whew, why? He repeated their name like twice or thrice in this verse. Have you seen this? These are three special men. All of them were special, but I want to show you something about these three men. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, you see why I say mark these men. Noah, Daniel, and Job. Of course, everybody is mentioned in different places. Abraham is mentioned somewhere else, you know, but I want to see how God, this is Ezekiel. And, and, and Job was, is, it is supposed that he lived before Moses because many people think, many Bible scholars believe that Job, uh, Moses wrote the book of Job. We don't know who really wrote it, but most people think it follows the pattern of Moses' writing. So that means Job must have lived before Moses. But God still invokes his name. Noah definitely lived before Moses. God still invokes his name. Daniel lived shortly around the time just before uh, whatever his name is, Ezekiel. God still invokes his name. And listen to how God is using his name. He says, even though these three men, they were in it. That means, if, this, if Israel sins against me, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to destroy them. And even if these three men were inside, I still will not stop. I will destroy them. The only thing is that I will deliver the three of them. <laughs> so, so, so though these three men were in it, they should, deliver, they should deliver both their own souls by their righteousness, say the Lord. So this is the grief of God. You know, like Abraham's time where he said, even if there are five righteous, even if there are ten. He said, this time is every man for himself. Even if, and that means these people touch God so much. We're talking about the stand out anointing. We're talking of that which makes us stand out to God. And we'll be talking about Job, how that Job stood out to God. How that God said, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him? Whoa! What a man. He may not have been a very special man to other men. But to heaven he was special. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Has God considered you? That you stand out to him. Are you stand out to God? These three men were stand out. Uh, and, and I've been trying to show you why they are stand out to God. I've been trying to you, show you why you must continue, contemplate the top anointing. The topmost anointing. It's not the anointing that makes you to be rich. It's not the anointing that makes you to be whatever the world thinks is success. It's the anointing that makes heaven stand in recognition of you. Though these three men were in it, if you go further down again, he says the same thing. If you go a few verses down, you will see the same thing again. He says, even I, I, will, I will send another curse upon them. Let, let's go one verse back. Let's see the curse. Or if I send pestilence into the land and pour out my fury upon it in blood, that means there's going to be sickness that will bring death. I want to show you something. Oh. Righteousness preserves a nation. Righteousness preserves a people. If you did not know, righteousness is a force field. It's not, see, God cannot help himself when he sees righteousness. Because he is, everything he does, he does it in righteousness. It is one of the greatest mysteries of satanism against the church. That we have undervalued righteousness. We don't know what it means. How that most, um, Job stood up. Have you considered? Have you considered Daniel? Have you, it's the same thing. Have you considered Noah? Noah that there's none like this man. Though these three men. That I am so angry. If I get these people who infuriate me, I will send pestilence. I will pour such fury. Sicknesses will come and kill people so much that there will be so much blood. It will destroy human beings. It will destroy animals. I will not spare the land. And even though, listen to that scripture. Noah, Daniel, and Job were in there. As I live, says the Lord, I will still destroy them just that I will help them. 
I will ne- I, they, they shall deliver neither. That means if any of them has son or daughter who is not like them, they will not be delivered. I will not even spare their children. Daniel's children. This one, the anger is so much, but it's so much that I, you know I cannot harm them because of the righteousness they are operating in. There's a false field of righteousness that is being the church. There's a systematic blinding of the church. We have thrown away gold, the gold of God for the brass of the world and the tin of the world. If only we knew what the pursuit of righteousness is all about. If only we knew what it meant to walk righteousness. None of us would be interested in any other thing. If only we knew what Jesus meant when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then every other thing will be added. He knows what he's talking about. Jesus is interpreting this. He's simply telling you that righteousness is a false field. If you seek the kingdom and the righteousness of the kingdom, it will attract things. Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 1. Isaiah 62 from verse 1. For Zion's sake, are we Zion? I will not hold my peace, says the Lord. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, says the Lord. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. Righteousness goes forth. (laughs) That's the story of Samson we've been doing in midweek. If you've not been coming for midweeks, you're missing a lot. And listen, when we are under a prophetic mantle, there's a mantle of the Lord. You will miss out whenever you miss whatever God is doing. I want you to understand something. Some people don't understand how spiritual things operate. Do you know that if God puts you in an assembly of righteousness and you just pick and choose what you're going to do, you will never obtain the real grace. There's completion for you here. But you have to participate in everything that does say the Lord, that the Lord has instructed us to do. So that you will be discipled and so that you'll be nurtured. So that you'll be established in righteousness and, 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 and fulfill the observer of God in your life. The beauty of God in your life. So, he says, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof. So, you see what God is talking about. He didn't say that I will not rest until he wrote to me becomes MD of his bank. No, 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 no. no. I'm not going to rest. I'm doing a work. There's a work I want to do in, in Rotimi's life. I, I, I need him to understand that righteousness can come out of his life and when it comes out of his life, it will shine in the realm of the spirit. I will be traveling out of the country soon for a conference that I've been invited to one of the messages the Lord put in my heart for that, well, that conference, I hope, maybe for another conference, I might change it any time, is the sons of Skiva were bowed. <laughs> yeah, I know. If you look at them, they were bowed. How do I know? Because their hair was shaven. So in the realm of the spirit, they were like a shaven Samson. That's why the devils can boast. All I know. Jesus, I know who are you. Because they have seen bald-headed men in the spirit realm. (laughs) Men without hair of righteousness, no hair of holiness, is visible in the spirit realm. Righteousness is visible in the spirit realm. And not only is it visible, it has a force field. When righteousness begins to go forth as brightness, there are things that must happen. Shame on any of us. When we think we can continue to wallow in iniquity, in sin, and in disobedience, you are doing yourself. I will not rest until your righteousness goes forth as brightness and your salvation will burn like a lamp that burns. Look at what your righteousness begins to do. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness (laughs) and the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name. Righteousness redefines your destiny. It redefines it. Oh, my. Have you seen the sun? I keep sharing this and I'll continue to see it. Have you seen the sun come out in its intensity? What happens? Heat. Usually, that's when we can take out our things, take it out to the sun to dry them up. That's where we can put all kinds of things. Even solar panels are put there. They 
energy comes in. They, you, you, someone was telling us yesterday about solar panel that they had, and they were saying that during the rainy season, when there's no sun, the solar panel doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't because there's no sun. That means the sun has power. That the sun can transfer something. They won't touch the thing. It's just the rays of the sun. It transferred, imparted something into a panel. That panel turned into electricity and powered everything inside your house. There's something inside that sun. Oh. There's something inside righteousness. Oh. There's something inside. Righteousness exalted a nation. Many people are looking for things. You should be looking for righteousness. That's the wording of Christ. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Then things. Because if I just was laughing at all sometimes, uh, don't these people understand? The things you are looking for are more than things. Righteousness will produce it. He says, these three men, they love righteousness more than anything. So I'm going to exalt them. Let me show you one scripture. Proverbs 24, verse 24. It says, He that saith unto the wicked, thou, sh- thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, and the nations shall abhor him. Do you, do you see? So, do you see even what is going on? Not only is God go- going to abhor you, people will abhor you. When the church generation cannot practice righteousness and cannot stand for integrity, people see us. And they see us and they expect us to be a scepter of righteousness or to carry a scepter of righteousness. They expect us to stand for that which is justice. They expect us to be the conscience of the nation. They expect us to do what is right. They don't expect man of God to be following politicians all around the place and looking for money. They don't expect us to be in any negative bad book that speaks of corruption or anything. When people see people who are supposed to be carrying that scepter, they see them that they are playing with that which is wicked, and they are allowing that which is wicked to go free. They are even doing that which is wicked. Even the people around the nation, they will abhor you. It's happening in our nation. People are despising the church. And that's because we don't understand who we are. We don't understand our identity. We are a people of the scepter of righteousness. Look at your neighbor and say, we are a people of the scepter of his righteousness. This is who we are. Hallelujah. We are people of the scepter of his righteousness. And, and, and when, we, when we lose that, not only will the people cause us understand this, this has deep implications. That people cursing, if you see many times people use this people, actually is a superimposition. It's demons. The demons, the powers, they gain rights and access over us. They gain abilities over us. It should not be. It should not be. You say, I'm strong, I'm powerful, I am mighty ego, I'm incredible hawk. But you are sick, you are diseased, you are weak. Even the weakest person will knock you down because you have no strength. When righteousness is taken away from us, it's no different from when Samson's hair has been cut. If you've been coming for midweeks, I'm sure you'll already be very conversant with these truths that we have been sharing. I want to use this opportunity to speak to everybody here. You are not supposed to miss your midweek services. I feel very grieved. After God has given us a word, and we have come together to seek the face of God, and I see a handful of people, people are not interested in seeking God's face. You, you can pretend as much as you like. You cannot be interested in seeking God's face and miss the time. I was glad when they said to me, let us come to the house of the Lord. I want everybody who is listening to me, I'm speaking to you as your pastor. I'm speaking to you as somebody who is going to give an account of your soul. We will do our best for you. But if you continue to live like this and put other things above Bible study, you will have yourself to blame. Listen, you will not get a complete grace from God that if there's any grace is passing through us, the Bible says that jo- Jacob went to a place and as he laid down on that place, that was where his father had built an altar. That was where his grandfather Abraham had built an altar and his father Isaac. He did not know, so he put stones there. As he laid down on that place, then he saw a vision that went to heaven. 
and there was angelic traffic. He said, this is the house of God. Everywhere that God has sanctified, every people that God has sanctified, that this is the house of God. These are the people of God. These are the houses. In a way, you are, you are also the house of God because you're a house of prayer. But the Bible talks about living stones, that he wants to build living stones, and he wants to build a temple that goes on to God, and each of us are that lively stone. So in a ways, when we come together, we are that lively stone. And I want to tell you that if you miss that, God might send something down through here. It won't come to you. You will miss it out. We see it in the life of Moses. You will miss it out. So please, there's a spiritual injunction. They that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish. I use this two, three minutes of exhortation to just tell each member of this church, don't be too big, don't be too small. Walk out your righteousness with fear and trembling. Don't think I'm too big. I'm bank manager in my office. You are nothing before God. You may be something to me. You may be a big man to me. You are nothing before God. Some of us, I fear that there's a lot of arrogance in our hearts and you're, you're, you have no fear of God. Humble yourself. Come here. I told you last week, the bigger you are, I challenge you, the bigger you are, come and be sweeping. Come and be organizing traffic. Learn to humble yourself. Put yourself down. It's easy to put pastors. Oh, look at these pastors. They are arrogant. They are doing this. They are doing that. It's because they are doing the same things that you were doing. And they refuse to bring themselves down. Bring yourself down. Come and seek God. Come and be an usher. Come and be a, a cleaner. Come and be a security organizer. Come and be something. Don't think that it's too less for you. We're going forward and we will understand what is righteousness. I want to introduce us to certain things today. Righteousness exalts. And that's what we learn. You will be called by a new name, Isaiah says, when your righteousness begins to shine as brightness. Well, that should make the church wake up and say, whoa. It's, it's, see, Jesus is simply rephrasing or paraphrasing or, 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 or saying in other words, these same things is the same thread of God from time immemorial. It's the same thread of God. Righteousness exalts. It shines at brightness and it can change your destiny. I said Isaiah chapter 62. It changes your name. It says you will be called by a new name in verse 2. Which the Lord. That's why. When your righteousness. It will attract your helpers to you. There are people that are supposed to. When Jesus stood there, his 12 disciples, righteousness brought them to him. I will show you. Yes. Everything and everyone you need. It is righteousness. It's not your struggle. It's not your network. Righteousness is your network. It's your greatest power. If only you knew you would be like a Daniel. You will be a worker of righteousness. How do I work it out? You'll be called by a new name. You'll be married in verse 3 and 4. To the Lord. He will change your name from desolate, from barren. Now you will become Hebziba. He will be a crown of glory in the hand. Oh, come on. This is righteousness. You will no longer be forsaken. This is righteousness. Only if the church knew, only if you knew my brother, my sister, only if you knew righteousness, righteousness, it exalts, you will become a worker. You will understand what Daniel understood. Let me show you what Daniel understood. Let's go to Daniel chapter 1. I will take Daniel chapter by chapter, verse by, yeah, chapter by chapter, so that each chapter contains an expression of how Daniel worked righteousness. Each chapter. For time, I will take it one by one. Maybe if I have time next week, maybe two, two, two chapters or something. No, give me from verse, I think, eight. Okay, let's start from seven or six, yeah. Now, see what has happened. Let's, let's say six, from six. Now, among these, we had read about the, how great they were in science and all of these things. So they were like the Albert Einsteins and the inventors and great people. Now, among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and unto Hananiah, Shadrach, and unto Mishael, Meshach, and unto Azariah, Abednego. Verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. Because prior to that in verse 5, they had told us that they not only brought them, they said, come and eat the king's food. And for three years, like Esther, understand this logic. 
For three years, they were supposed to. Um, um, yeah, okay. No, no, go verse eight. Yeah, it tells us the king appointed them to the king's meat, and so they will eat the king's food, and they will be big, and they will be healthy because it doesn't want anything to happen to them. And if it's like all our Jew people of today, which I believe, because they were idol worshippers, I believe part of it is all demonic indoctrination. Sure, you know that. How many of you have heard about parties where they put things inside the meat to try and they log guide and do all kinds of demonic things? I believe that's all part of it. Because if you read further into the practices of these Babylonians, this was part of their practice. And then Daniel looked at this thing. This thing is going to be like idol worship. Not only that, God has specifically instructed us. We cannot eat strangled meat. You see, it's an instruction from God. You see, people who walk righteousness, they are masters of God's instruction. Tree by the River is more than just a church. It's God's vision. It's God's vision for the times that we're living in. I'm a part of the vision. You should be a part of it. Join us.